at an abandoned sword manor, home to the greatest sword technique, we meet the third young master Shen. He gets attacked by a legendary demonic swordsman, but Shen effortlessly blocks the attack and pushes him back. The man charges at him, wanting to strike him down, but Shen enchants his weapon and fights back. They exchange blows, but Shen says that the fight will be over within 100 strikes. The man charges at him, and they continue their fight, but the man fails to land any blows on Shen, so his enemy starts using his dark arts. The man appears in front of him, attacking with his demonic skill. The man laughs as he notices Shen struggling, explaining that his chi has been taken away. Undeterred, Shen launches his 98th strike, but it gets blocked, but with his 99th strike, Shen takes him out, but Shen falls to his knees and coughs up blood. This is just a story being told to a group of young swordsmen. They think the story has been exaggerated, saying it would only be possible for an immortal. The storyteller tells them that it was just based on a rumor, and that Shen must now be hiding in the mountain with his sword buried somewhere. At that moment, the door to the abandoned sword manor opens, it's been 10 years since it was last open, and an old man invites them inside to train. In the mountains, we see Shen sitting in a wheelchair while enjoying a cup of tea. He calls out to an assassin who is hiding behind a tree. The assassin comes out of hiding, thinking he is an easy target, but suddenly, his sword breaks. He thought Shen had lost all his cultivation, but his body gets torn apart. Shen visits the place where his sword is buried. He feels a presence, and he calls out to it. A young girl named Chu comes out of hiding. Shen recognizes her, so he asks her what she needs. Chu begs for his help, and she gives him cake as an offering. As Shen eats the cake, Chu tells him about her senior sister who defeated her using blazing Tai Chi. Chu begs him to teach her more techniques, telling him that she is from the Liyan sect. He is aware that to become the inheritor of the sect, Chu needs to have a duel to the death with her sister. Suddenly, Chu's elder sister, Shei, arrives to defeat her. She insults Chu for relying on a crippled man to teach her. However, Shei is secretly jealous because she likes Shen. Since she can't have him, Shei pushes Shen off the hill. Chu jumps to save him, defending him using her blazing Tai Chi. Shei attacks her using the same technique, and Chu struggles against her. Shei launches an attack that breaks through Chu's defenses, and Chu thinks she's done for. Suddenly, Shen stands up to defend her, and Shen grabs onto a tree branch, releasing an ominous aura. Shei gets nervous thinking that Shen could easily destroy her, but Shen just lets her go, telling her not to hurt her sister again. Shei quickly leaves, and Shen returns to his wheelchair. He reveals that he has been rearranging his vessel to nurture Sword Aura for the past nine months. Chu gets excited asking Shen if she is now her disciple, but Shen makes it clear that he will only be coaching her for three months. He tells her about the ranks in the abandoned Sword Manor. New disciples are in the Mystique rank, and legends are found in the Heavenly rank. Chu tells him about Zi, who is the strongest in the Mystique rank. He is almost level 7, but Shen tells her that soon she will overtake him. But she doesn't believe him, saying that she is still at level 5. In the manor, we see Shen's elder brother Bai, talking to his father, Xiao. Bai tells his father about Zi's performance, and how he will reach the heavenly rank soon. Later, Shen lets Chu take a medicinal bath to clear her of her impurities. After that, Chu follows a training routine that involves running with a log, striking a stone, and taking medicinal baths. Eventually, she gets better, and Shen thinks she's good enough. She issues a challenge to Zi who doesn't take her seriously. Meanwhile, in the battle hall, everyone thinks that Chu is going to lose. Chu arrives, and they are surprised to see her with Shen. Bai tells Zi that he'll be famous if he beats her, since she was trained by Shen. Zi belittles Chu, and insults her master. Shen tells him that he will surrender after three moves. She charges at Zi, and he is surprised by her speed. Chu pushes him back with the first strike. Zi fights back, but none of his attacks land on her. Chu parries his attack and counters, breaking his sword and cutting his hair. She wins the match in just two moves, and Zi can't accept the results. Zi uses the sacrificial technique, giving up his defense for one powerful strike. He wants to die with Chu, but she just looks down on him. She counters, and Zi falls to the ground, securing her victory. The crowd gathers around Chu, complimenting her. Shou learns that his son has returned, so he wants to see Shen. Bai tells his father that Shen hasn't recovered yet, and Shou gets disappointed, thinking that Shen may never recover. In a flashback, 
we see Shan lying on a bed. Bai Yi tells his father that maybe the miracle Dr. Fu could do something for Shen. When Dr. Fu arrives, even he is not sure if Shen will recover, and Bai is pleased to hear this. Eventually, Fu comes out of the room, and his hair is now gray. He tells the family that Shen will survive, but he will no longer be able to practice martial arts, causing his father to pass out. Later, Sho wakes up and asks about Shen. Bai tells him that Shen is recuperating in the rear mountain. Sho tells him to leave, and Bai is upset because his father doesn't care about him, even though he is the eldest son. Suddenly, he hears a voice. As he looks around, it tells him that Shen is the favorite because he has more talent than Bai. Eventually, he finds a fiery creature speaking as it walks toward him. It tells him that Shen will always be above him no matter what he does. It asks him if he is satisfied with his life. He admits that he isn't. At that moment, the creature approaches him and tempts him to destroy his brother. Back in the present, Sho puts Bai in charge of the summit of the martial world, where many masters will be attending. Bai goes outside, and he meets up with a shady person, to send a message to the other masters. After that, the fiery creature appears, asking him if he's ready, and Bai states that this time Shan will really die. We see Bai in a meeting. They discuss how the heavenly masters have gathered for the summit. They compliment Bai, telling him that he's doing well to fulfill the manor master's duties. Suddenly, the leader of the devil sect, Lu, arrives. He calls out to Shen, blaming him for his disciples' disappearance. The top heavenly masters gather before him. Bai tells him that Shen is living in seclusion, so he doesn't have anything to do with his disciples' disappearance. Lu reveals that his disciple was actually sent to assassinate Shen, but he disappeared after entering the manor. He threatens to wage war against the abandoned sword manor. At that moment, Shen arrives in his wheelchair. He tells Lu that he got rid of his disciple. Shen looks at his brother with suspicion, and tells everyone that Lu can't possibly defeat him. Lu charges at Shen, and Bai feels delighted. It is revealed that Lu's arrival is part of Bai's plan to get rid of his brother. However, Shen just glares at Lu, causing him to feel intimidated. He coughs up blood, and knows that he will die if he attacks Shen again. Shen explains that one year has passed since his battle with the demonic swordsman, so his condition has improved. He asks the masters if he has vanquished any of their disciples. A heavenly master named Ru steps forward asking Shen why his disciple was put to death. But Shen admits to ending his disciple without offering any explanation. Another heavenly master named Dian also wants to fight Shen. Three masters now want to challenge him, but he still thinks they're no match for him. Sho questions how Shen could have vanquished so many people since he's been crippled for a year. A heavenly master from the manor named Lang tells Sho that he shouldn't interfere because Shen murdered disciples. He calls Shen a bad person and he wants to fight him. Heavenly master Chan also goes against Shen. Six masters now stand before Shen, but he still thinks they are no match. Chu's grandmother Li wishes to go against him for interfering with the Li Yan sect inheritance. The sword maniac, Xing, challenges Shen, wanting to learn more about his sword skills, and even the miracle Dr. Fu also joins in. Nine of the top-ranked masters now stand against Shen, and all the masters use their skills at the same time, causing a bright flash of light to appear. However, Shen is disappointed. He turns back, and all of the heavenly masters are instantly defeated. Everyone is surprised by what happened. After experiencing his power, Ru surrenders and asks for forgiveness. Xing drops his sword and walks away, promising not to use his sword while Shen is still alive. Shen looks at the remaining masters. Lang was spared, but he lost his hands, so he can no longer use his martial arts and will be expelled from the manor. Lu died because he cultivated with human blood, and Li's level gets lowered as punishment for going against him. Shen asks Bai if he admits defeat. He tells Bai that he doesn't want to destroy his brother, so he should take his own life. Bai laughs, and uses a skill to summon the fiery creature, which brings forth a mysterious man. Ru has heard about him, and he is known as Zong. He is said to appear every 60 years, to defeat the strongest person at the time. After defeating his opponents, he collects their swords. He has been around for the last 300 years, and is the martial world's nightmare. Bai tells Zong that the Nine Masters were no match for Shen. Zong gets excited. He boasts about defeating masters who have achieved enlightenment, so Shen should not disappoint him. Zong throws a projectile, but it has no effect on Shen. Shen mocks him, telling him that he's weak for someone who has been around for 300 years. 
but Zong says that it's only a fraction of his power. Shin tells him that he'll never know true martial arts because of the limitations of his technique. Zong gets angry, and he unleashes his powers, they exchange attacks, but Zong disappears, but swears to return soon to finish Shen off. Bai gets imprisoned in a dungeon, Chu asks Shen if he is worried about Zong. Shen says that Zong is probably close to level 10, which is the foundation for slashing the moon and becoming immortal. Chu gets shocked, because she thinks level 10 was just a fairy tale. She asks if he can beat Zong, and he tells her that he has a 50-50 chance of winning, causing her to be worried. The scene switches to show, who is in a meeting with three heavenly masters. Ru states that it is almost time for the duel, and Zong has already vanquished 23 heavenly masters. He is absorbing the blood from powerful people and gathering their chi. On the night of the duel, we see Shen waiting in the mountains with the heavenly masters. Zong arrives walking on the water. He jumps towards Shen, who tells him that he should have his own way of cultivation, since he came from the upper world. Zong attacks Shen, who evades his attack by floating in the air, revealing that he also came from the upper world. They start fighting while in midair, as Chu wonders how Shen has recovered. Dr. Fu notes that he is only forcing his legs to move with his chi. Zong gets serious, throwing a spinning blade which Shen easily deflects. Zong grabs onto one of his swords, and uses a skill, but Shen counters with his palm, pushing Zong back. Zong gets angry, thinking that Shen is looking down on him. He charges at Shen with his sword. Shen blocks it with his hand, but he gets injured. As Zong brings out his next sword, he tells Shen that only the one who slashes the moon will be remembered by everyone. He activates his skill, and boasts that his sword has collected 200 years worth of his chi, and he unleashes a devastating poison attack. But Shen tears off his robe, and uses the cloth to counter the skill. He tells Zong that he shouldn't talk about slashing the moon, since he hasn't reached level 10. He tells him to use his full power, because once he draws his sword, the fight will be over. Zong laughs, and he prepares to slash the moon. He eats his swords to absorb the powers of the masters he defeated, causing him to transform into a large fiery creature. He throws his blood at Shen, and it wraps around him. Zong laughs thinking he has won, but Shen emerges unscathed, and tells Zong that he is still weak because he hasn't achieved balance. Shen calls out to his sword, while Zong charges at him. The sword slices through Zhang's arm, and at that moment, Shen says that it is time to slice the moon. Zong regenerates his arm, but Shen's attack is too much for him to handle, and Zong is defeated. Everyone celebrates the victory, but suddenly, the moon cracks, and it breaks, showering everyone with chi. They all take the chance to meditate and increase their cultivation. Shen explains that strange events will occur in a few days, promising to explain everything soon. Back at the manor, Shen arrives, telling everyone that the moon was actually limiting their ability to gather chi. Now that the moon is broken, they have entered the higher realm, allowing them to communicate with the rest of the world. He explains that the world is actually a thousand times larger than they think, and now that the ocean is gone, they are free to move to the other realms. But he adds that the masters from other realms are far stronger than they are, so he warns them not to cause trouble. At that moment, two upper realm messengers arrive looking for Shen. One of them belittles everyone in the room, but the other messenger named Wu, apologizes for his friend. Wu asks about Shen's ancestry and Shen tells him that he's a descendant of Shen Meng Tian. Wu pulls out his scroll, he learns that Meng Tian was the first master of the Twelve Swords Pavilion, but was banished to the lower world for committing a huge crime, so he established the abandoned sword manor. Wu asks Shen if he would like to rejoin the Twelve Sword Pavilion, but Shen decides to start his own sect. Wu explains that in accordance with the Upper Realm's rules, Shen will be promoted to a third-rank baron, and all the land around the manor will become his property, and they disappear. Shen tells everyone that they are so much weaker than the Upper Realm cultivators. Shen offers to teach them cultivation techniques to help them improve, but Ru and Tian don't want to give up their heritage, so they both decide not to join the abandoned sword manor. Li on the other hand tells Shen that her sect is willing to join, so Shen promises to come up with a cultivation technique that will suit the Liyan sect. Later, they learn about a rule that new sects can't be attacked by other sects for a period of 10 years. Shen tells her that 10 years will be enough for them to catch up to the other realms since the speed of cultivation has increased thanks to the new moon. He opens a map and tells them about the location of the purple flame sect. Shen plans to obtain their purple flame technique because it's most suitable for the Li Yang group. 
Shen goes on to tell Chu to become his disciple and learn his sword technique. Li supports the decision and Chu quickly accepts. After following his training, Chu manages to break through to the divine realm, but she complains about Shen's brutal training methods. An upper realm merchant named On arrives at the manor and shows off his goods. Shen arrives and checks out the goods. He asks On about the spirit blood crystals. On explains that he has 5,000 crystals, but only 1 in 10 crystals will have spirit blood inside. He tells them the price, but it's far too expensive to afford. So Shen decides to buy 100 of the crystals. He starts picking them out, and On thinks that it is impossible to verify a spirit blood crystal, but to his surprise, Shen chooses the right crystal. But as Shen cracks his other crystals, they all have spirit blood inside. On gets impressed, and asks Shen to teach him how he picked the right crystals. He offers to provide them with all the spirit blood that they will need, and Chu thinks they should accept the offer. They reach an agreement, and he gives Shen some void pills, as a token of his sincerity. Chu tells Shen that the pills look dangerous, but he takes all three pills at once. He tells her that they will see the result after three days, but he seems to suddenly age rapidly. Chu panics and calls Dr. Fu. The doctor checks his pulse, and he notes that it's weird. He explains that Shen is not in a critical condition, because his heart is protected by Qi. Chu tells them that Shen wants to rest for three days, so Fu thinks that they should remain calm until then. Eventually, Shen wakes up. He stands up, and Fu notices that his legs have completely healed. The void pills revitalized his body, and after that, they arrive at the Purple Flame Sect, and the guards stop them. Shen gives them a letter, telling them to give it to their master. While on their way to the master, Shen asks the guard about the Purple Flame Martial Arts Competition. The guard tells him that the last competition was 460 years ago, and their ancestors went missing after that event, but it seems Shen knows something about it. They meet the vice master of the sect named Bei. She tells them that the master is cultivating, so she is there to welcome them instead. Bei asks Shen about the purpose of his visit. He directly asks her to teach Li's group her technique. Chu gets shocked, and Bei doesn't like his tone. Shen tells her that he will give her a manual in exchange, but she gets angry at the request, and orders her disciples to use the six-ending formation on Shen to kick him out. They get surrounded, but Shen wonders if the technique is the same as it was 400 years ago. As Shen dodges the attacks, he tells Chu that the formation allows the users to combine and multiply their powers. The disciples all combine their swords wanting to destroy Shen, but Shen instantly defeats them. Shen goes to see Bei, and finds her having a date with a man named Zen, from the Baiyu sect. Zen steps forward, threatening to attack Shen, but he gets beat up and starts to cry. Shen leaves them, and goes to the top of the mountain. There, they meet the master named Su. She is channeling her chi, and Shen tells her to give up, because she can't receive the sun's essence without a pure flame. Su stops, and thanks Shen for his advice. At that moment, Bei arrives, telling Su that Shen is there to steal their secret technique, but Chu tells her that Shen is there for an exchange. Shen offers to trade the true words of the Violet Phoenix for their regular technique, and Su is shocked to hear his words. Bei has never heard of such a technique, but Su says it's a technique that is only passed to the next master of the sect. Before the first master went missing, she was only able to learn a small portion, but Shen claims to know everything about it. Su doesn't believe him, since only her first ancestor should know about it, but he gives her a taste of the technique. Suddenly, the disciples arrive, and Bei orders them to attack Shen. But Su tells them to stop, because Shen is an important guest. She can tell that the words given to her by Shen are real, because it helps suppress the pain that comes with increasing the level of her technique. Bei tells her not to trust Shen, but Su slaps her, telling her she knows nothing. Su agrees to Shen's proposal. As thanks for helping them retrieve their lost technique, Su also gives him the Divine Violet Flower, a treasured artifact of their sect. Meanwhile, Bei cries as she tells Zen about the situation. He is outraged that his attacker is being treated as an honored guest, so he plans to tell his father about Shen so that he can get his revenge. Shen uses a petal from the flower, fusing it into Li to help her learn the Purple Flame technique. Li thanks him for helping her, and Shen tells her to teach it to her disciples after she comprehends the technique. After three years, Chu breaks through to the third level of the Divine Realm. Li has only broken through to the first level, and admits that Chu has already surpassed her. Shen goes to his disciple, and tells her to stop meditating. 
Chu knows that she's making progress, so she laughs, thinking that she's going to be invincible. Later, Ru approaches Shen asking for his protection, because the Baiyu sect is looking to take them over. Chu remembers that Zan is from the Baiyu sect, and thinks that he is doing this to get revenge. She tells Ru that they can't be attacked by other sects because they are protected for 10 years. But Ru is afraid that the Baiyu sect will play dirty. Shen orders Chu to go to the Baiyu sect, and tell them to stop disturbing the sects in their territory, or he will personally go there to wipe them out. Chu goes to the Baiyu sect, and their leader, Zen's father, can't believe that Chu is already level 3. Zen thinks that she must have improved so fast because she discovered some lost treasures. Zen suggests wiping out the abandoned sword manor, so they can get their hands on the treasures and make their sect even stronger. The Baiyu sect offers Chu some food, but she thinks it could be a trap, so she doesn't eat it. At that moment, Zen approaches her, telling her that they've met before. She passes on Shen's warning to them, but Zen laughs, thinking that Shen is arrogant and threatens to destroy the manor if they continue to offend the Baiyu sect. Chu decides to leave, but Zen stops her, saying that she can only leave once she defeats an elder named Situ, who is also at level 3. She gets flattered thinking that she is as strong as the elders in the Baiyu sect. The elders arrive, and they think Chu is underestimating their sect. Situ attacks Chu, but he misses. Chu brings out her sword, and Sita prepares to use one of his techniques. Chu gets worried, but Chu remembers Shen's teachings about being the first to attack, so she quickly charges at Situ. She attacks him continuously, and Sita can do nothing but evade. She slashes off his hair, giving him a funny appearance, so she laughs at him. Enraged, Sita tries to fight back, but the master of the sect intervenes, unleashing his energy, which Chu dodges. Everyone is shocked she could avoid the master's attack, and the master tells the elder to stop, and he acknowledges Chu's skills, telling her that the Baiyu sect will no longer mess with them. He orders Zen to send her off. And after she leaves, the Baiyu sect discusses Chu's sword skills. Sita says that her skills are out of this world, and they wonder where she learned such a technique. Zen mentions that Shen knows the secret technique of the Purple Flame sect, and his father wonders why he didn't mention it earlier. With this lost technique, they think that Shen must have unlocked the full power of the Purple Flame technique, so the master orders the sect to investigate the manor, wanting to take the technique for themselves. Chu returns to Shen, telling him that she won against an elder, but Shen isn't impressed, since he was only level 3. Many people join the manor after hearing about Chu's sword skills. Sho thinks they are suspicious, but Shen chooses to welcome them as external disciples. We meet Yun, a girl from the Baiyu sect. She received orders to investigate the manor along with her senior brother named Wei. At that moment, they are informed that they are being taken in as external disciples. The two get offended, knowing that external disciples are treated like servants. They see Chu, and they think she is pretty average. Suddenly, she approaches Yun, telling her that she looks pretty, so she's going to be Shen's maid. Wei asks about his role, and Chu tells him to do some manual labor. He is left in tears, as Yun is taken to Shen. We meet Xiao Long, a young master from the Dragon Emperor sect, one of the strongest sect in the region. He has orders to befriend the manor, but he is reluctant and looks down at them. Xiao welcomes him inside, but Xiao Long insults them. He approaches Chu and checks her out, saying that she's not bad. But he sees Yun and pounces at her, so Chu attacks him, hitting his arm. However, her attack has no effect. Shen steps forward and tells him not to be cocky with his golden scale armor, which is an invisible armor worn by those with dragon blood. He dares Xiao Long to take a hit from his sword. Shen launches an attack, but it does nothing, so Xiao Long starts laughing at Shen, but his armor suddenly breaks. At that moment, the dragon princess Wing arrives. The princess apologizes to Shen for her cousin's actions. She proposes an alliance where they would be united by marriage. Shen says he'll consider it and leaves to cultivate in seclusion. After he leaves, Sho tells Chu that it is time for his son to get married, but he wants him to marry someone he knows better, making Chu think she has a chance. Shen finishes cultivating, and Chu immediately approaches him asking him how he feels. Suddenly, the princess also goes to Shen, congratulating him on his cultivation. Shen asks the princess why she still hasn't left, making her sad. She tries to impress him by telling him the location of a legendary treasure. However, Shen seems to already know about it. 
the princess takes Shen to the location of the treasure. They encounter her uncle who stops them, because it is a forbidden area, but the princess explains the situation, so he lets Shen pass. The tower is surrounded by an intense aura that even their master cannot approach. As Shen approaches the tower, the princess thinks he won't be able to get close, but Shen activates the treasure, releasing a golden dragon, who Shen calls his old friend. The dragon ancestor appears, and he looks like he's been waiting for Shen. The princess thinks it should be impossible, because her ancestor left them 500 years ago, and Shen only just recently ascended. Suddenly, the stone treasure vanishes with the dragon ancestor, and Shen obtains the cold dew stone. According to legend, the stone was used to make one of the greatest swords in history. Shen leaves with the stone, and the princess goes to report to her father. Back at the manor, Chu is about to leave, thinking that Shen is going to marry the princess and forget about her. But Shen appears, asking her where she's going. She starts crying, thinking that he was going to marry the princess. But Shen tells her that the princess is just a kid. He shows Chu the stone, and tells her that he will use it to forge her a sword. Shen goes to on for the materials needed to refine the stone. But he doesn't have the required dragon eagle blood, because the monster is difficult to hunt. It is found near Chongtian City, where a dangerous man named Mr. Ren is said to commit atrocities. So Shen says he'll hunt the monster himself, claiming he knows what to do. Later, Shen finds the dragon eagles. One charges in his direction, and he knocks it down. He tells the monster that he will just borrow blood, and it lets Shen extract some blood. A group of bandits spy on him, and they think that Shen is weak, because he wasn't able to kill the bird. So they surround Shen, telling him to hand over the blood. The bandit leader tries to attack him, but is instantly taken out by Shen. The other bandits report back to their vice master Zhu, who wants to avenge their fallen brother. They make their way to Shen, and see him sitting on a rock. They surround him, telling him to apologize to Zhu. Zhu attacks using his thunder palm technique, but Shen stops it with his finger. Shen explains that he blocked the exit of his chi, so he is going to be destroyed by his own skill. Zhu screams in agony, and his body explodes, causing his men to panic. Shen returns to the manor with the dragon eagle blood. His father asks him if he had any trouble along the way, and he mentions his encounter with Zhu. At that moment, a servant runs in and tells them that the master of the Chongtian city, Ren, has issued a challenge to the manor. The Baiyu sect hears about this, and they think that Shen is doomed because Ren's 100 barrier skill is invincible. Shen forges a weapon for Chu. She asks Shen if he thinks he can win against Ren, but Shen tells her that she's going to fight Ren with her new sword, so Chu begins to panic. Shen finishes forging the sword, and he gives it to Chu, who names the sword Han Yi. On the day of the duel, the other sects watch, thinking that the manor is going to lose. Chu brings out her sword, while Ren orders his men to set up the 100 barrier formation, which creates a deadly illusion using their flags. Chu wears a blindfold, and the spectators laugh at her. Ren's men surround her, but she fights back and destroys their flags, surprising everyone. With just a few flags left, Ren joins in, making the formation more powerful. Chu gets disarmed, and they are about to finish her off. But Shen steps in, deflecting the attack, and reprimanding Chu for losing focus. He threatens to punish her if she loses, so Chu reclaims her sword and continues to fight. Ren orders his men to end the fight, but Chu takes them out. With just four flags remaining, Ren challenges Shen. Ren brings out the seal of Chongtian City, allowing him to unleash his full power. Shen gets disappointed, mocking Ren for using an item to control his aura. But Ren claims that he is stronger than Shen. Suddenly, Shen unleashes his overwhelming aura. Everyone senses it, and it even causes Zen to throw up. He walks past the flag bearers, who are too scared to move. Shen approaches an immobilized Ren, and touches his forehead. Ren drops his item, and Shen starts walking away, but Ren calls out to him. He bows before Shen, thanking him for sparing his life. So he offers to serve Shen with his cavalry unit, and Shen accepts it, making him a guardian of the manor. Back at the manor, Yun goes to Shen, and it appears she is now serving him, telling him about the Baiyu sect's plan to destroy the manor after 10 years. At the 10th anniversary of the moon slashing, the leaders of the other sects gather at the manor, but Shen refuses to meet them, sending Shou instead. Yun goes to Wei to gather information, and she learns that Wei has orders to spread a certain substance around the manor. 
Shen learns about this, and he thinks that they will use it to lure something out. Sho meets their guests, and he approaches Ambassador Wu, telling him to forgive his son for not being able to greet him. Meanwhile, Zen worries that Wu could interrupt their plans, but his father says that they're about to lure something extraordinary that even Wu won't be able to stop, and Shen will meet his end. There is suddenly a roar, which makes everyone nervous, and a ferocious devil beast approaches. Wu recognizes it as a legendary beast that is said to bring about destruction, and he tries to find a way to stop it. Wu tries to lure it away, but he gets blown away. Shen arrives, and Wu tells him that the devil beast is very powerful, with more than 500 years of cultivation, but Shen tells him not to worry, saying he's well prepared. As Shen heads toward the beast, they can see that he has reached the fifth level of the divine realm. Sho and the dragon king, Zhao, are keeping the beast busy, but Sho is slammed to the ground. The beast is about to finish him off, but Shen arrives to protect his father. He tells Zhao to retreat with Sho, and Wu runs towards Shen, thinking that he doesn't stand a chance on his own. Shen approaches the beast, but ends up petting it and calming it down. Chu is shocked to see him treating it like a dog and it seems it is his pet from 500 years ago. Shen orders the beast to behave and get stronger, but the beast doesn't want to leave him. He asks the beast for its horn, and we see the beast leaving as Shen holds onto its horn. Wu is impressed, because nobody has ever tamed a devil beast. Shen asks Zen about his thoughts, knowing that they were the ones who lured the beast. He cries as he begs for forgiveness, but his father admits defeat, and is willing to accept the punishment, as long as Shen doesn't eliminate the Bai Yusek's heritage. Shen agrees to his condition, and orders them to take their own lives. Zen cries, and his father carries out the sentence. Shen tells Yen to bury the two, and tells her that the Bai Yusek will continue through her. Later, Shen uses the beast's horn on a teapot. He tells Chu that he's going to take a shortcut to ascend to the heavenly realm. A dragon comes out of the teapot, and he lets it enter his body. He tells Chu that nobody should disturb him, while he cultivates in seclusion. One month later, we see a dragon carrying the group to Juchuan to participate in an auction. There is a special herb Shen is interested in, which will help improve his cultivation. They arrive at a mountain gate, and An tells the guards there that they are guests, but the guards just tell him to wait in line. Suddenly, young Master Zhou from the Twelve Swords Pavilion appears, and the guards bow to him. He reprimands the guards for disrespecting Shen, and asks on to introduce him to Shen. Zhou meets Shen, and he politely introduces himself, thinking that Shen is outstanding. They decide to ride together to get to the auction, but when they reach the top, they are greeted by an elder. He is surprised to see Shen, and starts acting rude towards them, but when Zhou appears, he quickly prepares to show him to his room. Meanwhile, a disciple goes to Shen's group, and escorts them to a dirty room. They get offended, but the disciple tells them it is the only guest room available, so they can leave if they don't like it. Shen puts a sign on the man's forehead, and tells him to show it to his master. He goes to an elder named Fong, saying that Shen is arrogant, but when Fong sees the sign, he immediately orders for Shen to be taken to their top room. After that, he tells the sect master, Guan, that it was the sign of the Tenth Heavenly Order, and we learn that 500 years ago, the Tenth Heaven was given the power to control the fate of Juchuan. Later, Shen encounters Zhou. Zhou tells Shen that the Twelve Swords Pavilion wants him to return, but Shen is not interested. Zhou calls Shen stubborn like his brother, and he walks away. He continues to observe Shen from his chamber, and he is joined by the Jushin Master's son, Jin. Jin asks him if he and Shen have a common ancestry, and he thinks that Shen is looking down on them, especially after he humiliated Juchuan, by drawing a sign on a disciple, so he wants to teach Shen a lesson. The auction begins, and the first item is a demon fire artifact. Shen thinks that demons are rare in this realm, so he decides to bid 100,000 gold. Jin wants to get back at Shen, so he offers 200,000 gold. Chu keeps outbidding him by one gold, and he gets angry as she taunts him. Jin continues to raise the price, as Chu adds one gold to all his offers. The price reaches 230,000 gold, but Shen decides to stop bidding, because he has already absorbed the essence of the demon fire. Jin wins the auction, but he throws it to the ground, thinking it's a fake. The auction continues, and the next item is the spirit blood identifying method, which is being sold by the manor. Shen decides to take a walk, and predicts Zhou will follow him. He tells Chu to handle things for him, 
and while outside, Xiao approaches him like expected. He tells Shen that he was attracted by the moonlight, but Shen points out that there is no moonlight, so he feels embarrassed. Shen wonders if it's okay to leave Jin alone, and Zhou realizes that he has been tricked. When Shen returns, Chu tells him that the item was sold for 500,000 gold, thanks to Jin, and Shen is pleased. The final item is presented, and it's the special herb that Shen is after. There are a lot of bids on the item, but a powerful wanderer named Fa places a bid, and on thinks he also plans to use it to get stronger. Shen places a bid of 1 million gold making everyone surprised. Jin points out that Shen doesn't have a million gold, but he says the herb is a fake, so it doesn't matter what he bids. Suddenly, they are all caught in an encirclement array. Fa charges, but he gets taken out in one hit. Zhou is surprised to see such a strong warrior get destroyed in one hit. Jin guides Zhou out of the array, but Shen decides to explore the array with his group. Shen finds the storage of the auction, but they fail to find the special herb. However, they end up taking a bunch of valuable medicines, and Shen draws his symbol and breaks out of the array. He sees the people who set up the array with their master Guan. Shen deduces that their plan was to use the auction to lure in the other sex, to eliminate all their foes around them. Shen tells them that he's from the tenth heaven, so they shouldn't defy him, but Guan tells him that they have a new master. Guan stabs Shen from behind, but he ends up hurting himself. Shen explains that there is a pact that prevents the people of Juchuan from harming those from the tenth heaven. The array shatters, and Guan falls to the ground, along with the other disciples. At that moment, Guan's mysterious master appears. The master ends Guan's life, and Shen wonders who he is. The master says he is also aiming to ascend to the heavenly realm, but disappears, and Shen thinks they'll meet again. After that, they head back home. They discuss how Juchuan was destroyed after the people got free from the array. Wing receives a letter telling her that something happened at the Dragon Emperor Mansion, so she bids Shen farewell and runs back home. Shen thinks that the 500-year Dragon Clan Apocalypse is coming, and Chu suggests helping Wing out. At the Dragon Emperor Mansion, Zhao is injured, so the Grandmother Dragon who is over 500 years old is now in charge. Xiao Long tells her that Zhao's condition is stable, and she is relieved to hear this. Wing arrives, asking about her father's condition but her grandmother tells her that he is okay, but it seems he was attacked at close range, so they suspect there is a traitor. She tells Wing that she will now need to take her father's place, as the one who will perform the dragon ritual and draw the true dragon's power. Shen and Shu are on their way to the mansion, but it's located underwater. He summons someone from the water clan, but he acts rude and tells them to go away. He refuses to guide the way, so Shen throws him aside. Shen uses his water diversion art to part the sea and allow them to reach the mansion. Meanwhile, the Dragon Clan learns that someone used the water diversion art, and they get nervous. Because the Dragon Ancestor only gave the water diversion art to the person who saved their clan from calamity 500 years ago. So when that person arrives, they need to go out and pay their respects. Shen is greeted by Wing's uncle, Tong. As he enters the mansion, he remembers the Dragon Ancestor from 500 years ago, thinking that so much has changed. Shu wonders why they haven't seen Wing yet, and Tong explains that Wing is busy with the dragon blood ritual. He asks how Shen mastered the water diversion art, since it's the secret of the dragon ancestor. But Shen says he just happened to come across it. Tong wants to learn more about Shen, so he asks Shen to spar with him. Shen tells him to attack with his ultimate skill, and if he can push him back a single step, he will admit defeat. Tong thinks Shen is being arrogant and warns him that his skill has the power of seven dragons, but Shen tells him to go all out. Tong's son gets offended, thinking Shen is too arrogant and attacks Shen with his ultimate skill. Shen creates wind underwater, which reflects the attack back at the boy. Tong catches him and is relieved that he is alive. He wants to fight Shen, but Shen refuses, saying his son is injured, so they should call it a day. The grandmother dragon and Wing hear about this incident, and is shocked that Shen could reflect the power of five dragons without making a single move. Wing mentions that Shen is extremely powerful, and seems to know every type of martial arts. The grandmother dragon seems to have a faint memory of him, so she invites him over to see her. When Shen arrives, she immediately recognizes him, calling him the God of Sword, surprised that he looks the same even after 500 years. Shen considers her an old friend, and tells her he will help them through their trial, just like he did 500 years ago. 
The grandmother feels relieved, offering him treasures if he saves them, but Shen is not interested. As he starts walking away, she mentions that they have the special herb he's been looking for. Shen becomes interested, and considers it his destiny to stop the apocalypse, so he accepts her offer. While waiting for Shen, Chu asks Wing about the Dragon Clan tribulation. Wing explains that every 500 years, the dragon blood boils, and it's a chance for Dragon Clan members to turn into dragons. Normally it would be a good thing, but it is a disaster for someone who is not a pure-blooded dragon. So they hold the dragon blood ritual at the tower to pray for the stability of the bloodline, but she worries they may encounter problems during the ritual that could lead to the end of the dragon emperor's bloodline. At that moment, Shen comes out, telling them that they will stay at the mansion for a few days. Wing goes back to her grandmother, and she looks confident now. She tells Wing that Shen will help them, so she can focus on the ritual. The tribulation begins, and a red light pierces through the sky, disturbing the chi of everything around it. Chu is having a hard time, and Shen explains that she needs willpower to move during the tribulation. He says that the blood of a true dragon transforms every 500 years, but now the blood is restless, so the surrounding area is being affected. At that moment, Shen feels a presence that is looking to cause trouble. Chu wants to get rid of them, but Shen says that the Dragon Clan needs to overcome some trials themselves. Meanwhile, Wing feels the power of the dragon flowing through her body, saying that it's incredible, but her grandmother claims that it is still nothing compared to Shen. As she tries to contain the energy, her grandmother tells her not to leave no matter what, and she leaves to check on their barriers. After six hours, we see Wing struggling as her uncle rushes to her. He tells her that her father is dying, causing her to lose focus and take damage. He says that her father wants to pass on his legacy to her, but Wing refuses to leave, saying that she needs to focus on the ritual. He offers to take over for her, but Wing tells him that he's not pure-blooded. Her uncle stabs his chest and uses a blood technique, claiming that it increases the purity of his blood. He tells her to go to her father, so she leaves the place to him. She gets blown away, and her uncle suddenly starts to corrupt the ritual, and the altar starts collapsing. She tells her uncle that everyone in the dragon clan is going to be destroyed by his actions. But her uncle laughs, as he takes on a more menacing appearance. He says that he got rid of his dragon blood, so he won't be destroyed. Wing asks him why he wants to destroy the dragon clan, and he reveals that he is following the orders of his master. Wing realizes that he can't be her uncle, and attacks him using the power of nine dragons. Tong is surprised she can use the ninth level of the dragon technique, but he starts using a demonic skill, which overwhelms her attack. Wing is injured, and Tong laughs as he says that she is no match for him. Using the ritual, Tong opens up a passageway to the dragon mansion, and a group of hooded men descends towards them. The mysterious master appears, saying it's time they ended the dragon's bloodline. Wing attacks Tong once again, but as Tong tries to counter it with his demonic skill, it doesn't work. He realizes that she used a skill from the abandoned sword manor, instead of her dragon magic, so he struggles against it. Meanwhile, the hooded men are now close to the tower, but they are stopped by Shen and Chu. They introduce themselves as the Six Evils, and they have orders to destroy the castle. Shen is surprised to see the Six Evils in such a place, and explains that the Six Evils each have dragon killing swords, but their powers are limited, and would need to combine their powers to stand a chance. One of them charges, exchanging blows with Chu, but he gets pushed back. The other members are shocked since they are all at level 5. Two of the six evils attack her, and she struggles against them. Shen tells her to find their weaknesses, but she can't seem to find any. The other enemies are surprised that Chu is able to keep up with two of their members. Another one joins in, and the three combine their powers, but Shen tells them that they can't defeat Chu, because she has already adapted to their techniques. She slices through their sword skills, shocking her enemies, so the six evils merge to attack Chu. As Chu dodges the attacks, Shen claims that the six evils are weak, and they are just letting their swords control them. But they still think that when they combine their powers, they are invincible. The six evils attack at the same time, but Chu launches a counterattack, and they are all trapped in crystals. They are all shocked at what technique she used, and Shen states that they lost, because they don't have proper control over their swords. Chu destroys the crystals, and puts an end to the six evils. Shen goes to Wing and he sees her struggling. As he approaches her, Wing tells him to leave, 
because the dragon blood can no longer be stopped. Shen notes that the situation is the same as it was 500 years ago and is probably nature's way of balancing the world. Chu arrives saying that her master can solve the problem, but Wing is not convinced. She thinks that the dragon blood will swallow everything after it destroys the dragon clan, and no one can stop it. Wing tries to sacrifice herself, but Shen stops her saying it's not enough to solve the problem. He explains that the dragon blood will continue to get stronger, and it will end up destroying the world. Shen creates a shield, pushing the dragon blood up. Then he uses a mysterious skill to catch the dragon essence and suppress the dragon blood. The dragon blood calms down and returns to the pool. Shen tells Wing that it's all over and she passes out. When Wing wakes up, she sees a painting of Shen, so she asks her grandmother about it. She says that Shen is the same person who saved them 500 years ago. Wing thinks it's impossible because Shen only entered their realm 10 years ago but her grandmother claims that he is the only person capable of stopping the apocalypse. Later, her grandmother thanks Shen for saving their lives, and she gives him the special herb. She reveals that she doesn't have much time left, but Shen gives her the blue dragon pearl, which the dragon ancestor left to him. It has the power to help the user ascend to the next realm, but he left it to Shen to choose a worthy successor. It would be able to save her, but she decides not to take it, wanting to be with the dragon ancestor again. She offers it to Shen, but he says he has no need for it, saying he will ascend once he slashes the moon again. She decides to give the pearl to Wing, so she can ascend and stay by Shen's side. After some time, she passes away, after entrusting the future of the clan to Wing. Emperor Zhao goes to Shen, thanking him for saving his life. He mentions that the dragon ancestor instructed the family to serve whoever saves them from danger twice, so they want to become his slaves. Shen says there's no need, but Zhao insists. He tells Shen that he can take whatever he needs from their treasure house, and Zhao offers his daughter to Shen. Shen accepts, but he says that he doesn't want to be in a relationship, making Wing sad. Suddenly, the Guardians of the Broken Heaven sect calls out for the Dragon Emperor. They go out to meet the Guardians, and Shen realizes they are working for the Mysterious Master. One of the men is introduced as Zai and Zhao recognizes him as a very skilled level 6 swordsman. Zai tells the Dragon King to offer his daughter and submit to them, or else they will wipe out his clan. Chu gets angry and pulls out her sword, challenging him to a fight. But Shen stops her. Although her technique is stronger, Zai is one level above her. Zai is insulted that Shen thinks his technique is inferior, but Shen calls his technique clumsy, pointing out that his sword is damaged. Zai gets angry so he challenges Shen claiming that he will win within three moves. Shen floats in front of him, and he continues to belittle Zai's sword skills. Zai tells him to draw his sword, but Shen says that everything can be used as his sword. Zai slashes at him, but he misses, so he follows up with a skill that launches a powerful ball of energy, but Shen also avoids it. Shen blows, and the wind causes Zai's sword to turn into butterflies. Shen explains that he condensed his sword aura into his breath, and exploited the damage in Zai's sword. Shen says that the dragon mansion is under his protection, so Zai leaves to report to his master. After that, he tells Zhao to recuperate, and he takes Wing as his second disciple. When they head back to the manor, Sho is proud of his son's accomplishments, and says that all the sects have been coming to kiss up to them. He mentions that even the Twelve Swords Pavilion has come to visit. He sees young master Zhou, with his brother Bai. Zhou wants to help them make peace, and it seems with Zhou's help, Bai has mastered the ascending sword technique. Bai is grateful for his help, and Zhou tells him that he helped him because they have a common ancestry. An old man approaches Bai, asking him about the manor's disciples. Bai says that 30% of the manor's disciples want to join their sect. The old man asks Bai to become his disciple, and he accepts it. We see two of the manor's disciples, Peng and Wang, fighting because Peng wants to join the Twelve Swords Pavilion, Bai intervenes, and Wang calls Peng a traitor for wanting to join the pavilion, but Bai just tells him to report it to the manor. The old man tells Bai that he wants to talk to Shou and Shen about the manor disciples who want to join their sect. At that moment, Shou arrives, telling them that there is nothing to discuss, but an elder from the pavilion points out that the manor's founder was from their sect, so they should return to their roots. Shen joins the discussion, saying that the pavilion can't take their disciples, because the pavilion can't even defeat his disciples at the same level. Bai tells him not to ruin their relationship with the pavilion. 
but the elder gets offended and throws his dagger at Chen, but Wing deflects it. Chu gets angry, so she challenges him to a duel, claiming that she will win within three moves. She brings out her sword, telling them that they must crawl out of the manor if he loses, and the elder accepts this condition. She launches her first attack which the elder tries to counter, but he gets injured. Chu follows up with her second attack, and he falls to the ground. They admit defeat, and Shen tells them to crawl back home, offending them even further. At the pavilion, Zhou's mother Mei hears about the incident and she gets angry. Seeing Shen as a threat, she goes to the sect master Chong, who is cultivating in seclusion. She tells Chong that their family has been humiliated by Shen, and that he is looking down on the pavilion. Chong becomes furious, and wants to get back at Shen. As Shen is cultivating with this special herb, Wing notices that Shen's aura is changing, but Chu thinks this is nothing new. Suddenly, Xiao arrives, telling Shen that the pavilion has sent a hero's order against Shen, meaning that all the heroes of the land will attack him, but Shen is not worried and says they should ignore it. Chong hears about Shen ignoring his order, so he summons the Seven Sword Slaves, telling them to capture Shen alive. Mei thinks that Shen will lose, because all of the Sword Slaves are level 6, but she doesn't want Shen to be captured alive, so she seduces the leader of the group into ending Shen's life. One evening, Shen senses their presence, so he goes outside to meet them. He thinks that his enemies are weak because they only got to level 6 by using drugs to artificially boost their strength. Shen knows they are using the missing sword technique, and the leader is surprised, because it is considered a top secret technique within their sect. Shen thinks they are no match for him, so he tells Chu and Wing to fight instead. The leader is offended and charges at Shen, but Chu and Wing defend him. As his disciples fight, they begin to struggle, but Shen coaches them and says that he will teach them the four arm sword technique which will let them combine their powers. The sword slaves attack without mercy, and Shen uses a voice transmission skill to teach his disciples the technique. They gain a vague understanding of the technique as the sword slaves get into formation and attack them again. His disciples get pushed back, but Shen tells them to support each other while acting as one. They clash with the sword slaves, and they gain the upper hand. The sword slaves acknowledge that they are weaker than his disciples, and they end up taking their own lives. Mei gets angry hearing about the failure, and she thinks about dragging the Thunder City into their conflict. It is revealed that 400 years ago, Shen fell in love with the Thunder City's princess, but their parents opposed their relationship because their sex were enemies. Shen went to the city and caused chaos, which is the reason that got him banished to the lower realm, but Mei thinks that Zhou might be able to defeat Shen, which would raise his status in the sect, so she comes up with a plan. We see Zhou training in the woods. His associate compliments him on his improvement, but he knows he is still lacking compared to Shen. The man was sent by his mother to help him train, but as Zhou turns around, we see him using a mysterious skill. Meanwhile, Shen receives a letter about his ancestors' relics at the pavilion. He knows it's a trap, but decides to go and retrieve them anyway. When they get to the pavilion, he encounters Zhou, who challenges him to a fight, telling Shen that he can inherit the pavilion if he wins, but if he loses he will pay with his life. Although he is not interested, Shen reluctantly accepts. Chu thinks he's acting strange, and Shen tells her that he has been infused with a certain aura, making him twice as strong, but he's being controlled. Chu wonders if it will be okay, but Shen tells her she will be the one to fight. As Chu prepares to fight, the spectators think he's looking down on the pavilion. Zhou reminds Shen that his life is on the line, but Shen isn't worried. Zhou pulls out his sword and charges at Chu. They exchange blows, and the fight appears to be intense, but Shen sits down and starts reading a book, saying that the fight is too boring to watch. He predicts that Zhou is going to lose, because his aura only has three waves of explosive energy. Chu gets injured, and she desperately tries to fight back, but Zhou appears to be getting exhausted as the fight drags on. Chu starts to push him back, and Zhou gets frustrated, activating his ultimate skill. His appearance transforms, but Shen mentions that the skill is self-destructive, so Zhou will definitely lose. Zhou's power is enhanced, but his body starts to reach its limit. His movements start to slow down, and Chu takes her chance and stabs him from behind. Mei cries for her son, and goes to Chong to help her get revenge. Chong is reluctant, because Zhou was the one who requested the fight, and he even lost to Shen's disciple. 
Mei mentions that since Xiao was his disciple, people are starting to say that Shan is superior to him. Chong can't accept this and decides to settle things with Shan. Meanwhile, we see Shen taking the ancestor's relics. At that moment, Chong approaches him and asks him why he doesn't have a sword. But Chu explains that everything in this world is Shen's sword. Chong thinks Shen is arrogant, so he challenges him to a fight. Chu notices that he also has no sword, but he says that his sword is in his stomach. Shen knows that he has swallowed his sword aura, giving him power but damaging his body's organs. He knows that Chong can't fight for more than an hour, so Shen doesn't want to take advantage of him. Chong knows that this is all true, but he still claims that the pavilion's technique is the best for using sword aura. Shen suddenly slices a table using two fingers and proceeds to show off a range of sword aura as the whole room begins to crumble. Chong admits that Shen is better than him and realizes Shen's true identity as being the first ancestor of the pavilion. He pays his respects and declares that the pavilion will follow him once again. But that's where this video ends. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.